Welcome to Last Set News. My name is Rob. And really comes down to is that somebody is lying big time. And what I'm talking about is there was a couple interviews over the, over the weekend. And of course, if you haven't, uh, if you're not caught up to speed, the SEC, this is the chairman, uh, Gary Gensler, have come down pretty hard on uh, staking and centralized exchanges. And we had talked about how there are some things that are actually right. We should not have these co-mingling of funds. I've talked about this. And what FTX did is they used your money to buy themselves a bunch of condos and things like that in the Bahamas. And now that really shouldn't be going down. But there's things that are just reality. And there's some things that are just going off the deep end. So what we're going to talk about here is Gary's going to give a little presentation. He's going to talk to uh, Andrew Ross Sorkin. He is the host of Squawk Box and just tell him why and how easy it is to come in and register these securities and uh, the questions that, that come forth. So we're going to go over a bunch of different things. But what the resolution for me and the only way I see out of this is we have to sue the SEC. This is what I'm talking about. Just take a listen to this uh, interview. Well, let me ask you, talking about clarity, and this is maybe a philosophical sort of broader policy perspective. I think that there is a common view uh, that your office is using uh, all available means effectively to keep crypto out of the mainstream financial system through enforcement, accounting rules, inspections. Clearly, there's not real guidance yet on custody. And this may very well be a reasonable... Well, let me ask you, talking about clarity, and this is maybe a philosophical sort of broader policy perspective. I think that there is a common view uh, that your office is using uh, all available means effectively to keep crypto out of the mainstream financial system through enforcement, accounting rules, inspections. Clearly, there's not real guidance yet on custody. And this may very well be a reasonable policy choice, if that's the choice. The question is, if that's the choice, why not just say it publicly? We're using all available tools. We're talking directly to market participants. We take the meetings and we say, this is how you comply. There's a handful of tokens that have actually registered. The intermediaries, the storefronts, if you wish, the casinos, that people are uh, investing in and investing at need to properly comply and disentangle these bundled products. The business model that they've set up has, is rife with conflicts. And so we've been very candid with them. I've done it in multiple speeches since I came to the agency. We'll continue to engage. We're technology neutral. But if this field has any chance of survival and success, it's time-tested rules and laws to protect the investing public. Disclosure, full, fair, and truthful disclosure. Address right. conflicts and disaggregate these bundled businesses and don't have your hand in the customer's pocket using their funds right. or your own uh, sure, again, platforms. So but in terms of the, the, the larger industry and whether the, I mean, you, you even seem to suggest the larger industry may or may not survive um, you know, one of the pieces of that survival to some degree, I think, has been this idea that one day there may be something like a Bitcoin ETF or something else. Grayscale, as you know, appealing uh, the SEC's Bitcoin ETF decision, which is effectively to say it can't happen. Is there any path at which you think either that specific ETF or something like it could? The, the paths, I'm not going to speak about one, but let me generally say, Andrew, the path forward is well trodden whether it's large companies that you follow every day, the Apples and, the, and, and other tech companies or the automobile companies, manufacturing companies know how to register their offerings. The exchanges like the New York Stock Exchange and NASDAQ and so forth know how to be compliant and come into registration. The big broker dealers and the small thousands of broker dealers, the mutual funds. Right. I dare I go on. We have tens of thousands of registrants that properly in good faith comply, they register, they make the proper disclosures. It's time for this group to do so. The runway is getting awfully short. Um, and we're here to try to protect the right. investing public. So there you go. I mean, he makes a great case of just how easy it is. The industry, and it says right here, the industry knows how to get in compliance. They're just choosing not to. So again, somebody's lying. And I want to give you both sides of the story before we go into the crypto side. So that is Gary Gensler saying, essentially, you guys are messing up. 
you're not doing the right things. We made it super crystal clear to do it. It's very simple. Just come in and talk to us. Okay, got it. And moving forward, of course, the first person that was affected, this is Jesse Powell, the former CEO of Crack. And he comes out and he goes, oh, man, all I had to do was just fill out a form on a website and tell people that staking rewards come from staking. Wish I'd seen this video before paying a $30 million fine and agreeing to permanently shut down the service in the U.S. How dumb do I look? And when I read that, I'm like, that's pretty funny. But uh, there's something to be said about that. So I'm just like, well, you know, maybe something happened with Jesse. And then let's move forward. This is Jason Gottlieb. And he is a lawyer, musician, inspiring polymath, regulatory enforcement litigation. He talks about this. He goes, I found the SEC's all crypto products have to do is come in and register. Unbelievably insulting. It assumes there's this vast quantity of sophisticated security lawyers advertising clients or advising clients. Nah, man, you can just get away with the SEC. YOLO, baby, do whatever you want. Tons of products and their lawyers desperately want to come in and register. But when they do, they're told no, or worse, they draw a Wells notice, which is basically saying we're going to sue the pants off you. There is simply no path to registration from any crypto products. The SEC says just register. We say cool, but as what? Because the regs just don't fit. In response, we get blank stares, apologies, and mumbles that they're not here to give us legal advice. If the new de facto rule is crypto equals no, that rule has to come from Congress because that's the one who sets precedent and sets the laws, and it's up to the SEC to enforce them. The SEC does not write the laws, or at least through an APA process, not through enforcement. Going on CBC, CNBC to say that registration is just a formal on our website is a painful misrepresentation. Again, it's insulting. It brands the whole industry and its lawyers as basically just people don't know what they're doing and are just uh, running a, running amok. If registration were possible, we'd do it, give us a pathway, show us it can be done, or if at all, and watch the flood of registrations. Or don't, and watch the industry move offshore. And I thought to myself, I'm like, well, this is just one lawyer's opinion about what's going on, but I mean, how do we really know? Well, this is a good one. Uh, Tung V. Lee, uh, she is also a part of enforcement, legal affairs, and she was formerly at the SEC. And she said this, I was at the SEC and started working in crypto in 2017. Everyone was trying to wrap their heads around it, including going after outright scams. It's now 2023. We should have at least come up with a working regulatory framework by now. And we have not. And on top of that, we talked about this before, Hester Pierce, also part of the SEC. And she said this, look, this is on February 9th. Today, the SEC shut down crack and staking program. The commission argues that the staking program should have been registered as a securities offering. The more fundamental question is whether the SEC registration would have even been possible, if at all. Crypto related offerings are not making the SEC's registration pipeline. The program, this is interesting, the program will no longer be available in the US from Kraken. And Kraken is enjoined from ever offering a staking service in the US, registered or not. So when when Jesse Powell came out and said, we are permanently shutting down, I just glanced over, but now I get it. They essentially sent a letter going, okay, just stop suing us and, and harassing us. We'll pay $30 million. Until when? And this is what it comes down to. Just tell me where I'm off here. The SEC is a bully. They're going to bully us until we submit. They're not going to allow us to get out of here. There's only one way path forward, and that's suing the SEC. Take a look at this. So from there, we also had Brian Armstrong, who, you know, he's the one that, that first talked about this. He goes, look, uh, we will happily defend crypto staking services against claims. It's a securities product. And not that he's saying like we're, we'll defend it. What he specifically said is we will defend this in court if needed. And I said, this is great. This is exactly what we need. We need to get, go at the SEC because if we just let them pick us off one by one, it's easy pickings for them. And, and when, before people say, but Robbie, you don't understand the SEC is such a, uh, a juggernaut. We'll never win. Mark Cuban beat them. Mark Cuban beat them in a court case in 2013 when they, when they accused them of going for insider trading. So don't tell me it can't be done. And that's just Mark Cuban, one guy. So you tell me that if we can get everybody to come together as far as the exchanges, and especially in the U.S., and we can't beat the SEC, or at least tell them, give us some clarity, I don't see the problem here. But again... I'm just looking at it in one way. I need you to, to see where I'm wrong here and put me on the right path. But that's how I see it. Also, if you think that the SEC is going to give up, of course, this is the new story that everybody's talking about today. 
Packs, those are poorly ordered to stop issuing Binance USD, which I found odd because it's a stable coin. So, of course, people are laughing at the SEC going, ha, that's funny. That's just a stable coin. How is there any kind of uh, uh, requirements for income? Well, here's a good statement. This is from Adam Cochran, and he is part of the part of the team over there at uh, Synthetics, Earn Finance, Cochran.io. And he said like this, one of his primary statements was this, but I don't earn from it. How can it be a security? It doesn't have to be a good or lucrative security to be a security. If someone is holding or otherwise securing value for you and you are trusting them to do it and otherwise exempted, it's a security. And here's what he says. People don't realize it. And this is his, his first his first tweet, but it goes gets deep. No debenture, evidence of indebtedness, certificate of interest, collateral trust certificates, certificate of deposit, rights or in general, any interest known as security or certificates of interest or participation in rights to. That's the whole definition of securities, which could mean anything. If all that matter was the Howey test, you wouldn't have an entire field of law dedicated to this one act. Securities lawyers, unless otherwise exempt as a bank or regular trust, redeemable deposits and trust can easily fall under this. Deposits of trust can fall under that. The fact that these assets hold underlying treasuries make them a lot like a money market fund, exposing holders to a security, even if they don't earn from it, making an argument, not that I agree with it, that they can be a security. So look, if uh, you think that this is going to stop, I think this is just the beginning. And then to really make my case, this is it. If you want to just put everything in one little meme, this is how things are going. SEC is supposed to protect us. This is what's happening. Give us some clarity. So I asked you guys, I said, look, do you think we should be suing the SEC if this is even a possibility? Because I didn't think people would really be on board with me. But so far, coming up on so many, almost a thousand votes here. Yeah. People are like, let's do this. Because I said, if we do this, we're going to be just like Ripple and it's going to affect us for a couple of years. But it will force the hand of the SEC instead of pushing everything outside for to the other parts of the world. Not that America's the end all be all, but I think we can get a lot of things done if we move in this direction. I ask it here, I ask it also on YouTube, it's the same thing. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section, but this is the only way that I see a path forward. I have a tweet, I would like you to retweet it. And I said, can I get some traction? I'm gonna call out Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, Binance, US, Brian Armstrong, Jess Power, the Winklevi, CZ and Simon Dixon. If there's one thing that'll unite everyone in crypto, this is pretty much it. So everybody bickers and complains about other different projects. This is the one thing we can all agree on, I'm pretty sure. So that's what we have in that piece. Let me know where I'm wrong. Sound off in the comments section. But there is some positives to be said. And this is from Coindex, Coindesk, excuse me. Mm. Bernstein says regulatory backlash will lead to more DeFi and offshore crypto. First of all, who's Bernstein? So Bernstein... They are an uh, investment firm and they deal with uh, people. I like this one. It's wealth management advises high net worth clients on planning for and living with the complexities that come with wealth. And it's actually true. So like with this one, these guys have, I think it's around 700, 800 billion assets under management. And they came out with a report that said, look, if the SEC keeps doing this, it's just going to go to DeFi. So whatever. It comes down to this. The question remains whether the regulatory, the regulator would go after all staking programs, looks like they will, even if they provide specific disclosures around yield, users to actively stake and unstake their crypto and operate on a pass-through basis, both on returns and costs. I don't see them stopping. Bernstein says a decision by the regulator to prohibit all staking programs may not be straightforward, and some firms could decide to fight against the regulatory stance. That's why, of course, Brian Armstrong came out and goes, yeah, we'll go to court. Let's do this. Lastly, Bernstein asks if this foreshadows action against other stable coins, such as USD coin, coin and Tether, or whether it's specific to BUSD, which they just went after them right now. Such regulatory overreach will result in further movement towards decentralized finance apps built on chain by anonymous teams. Regulators will find it even more challenging to follow this regulation by enforcement. Growth will continue but not you know, in the US, but in Singapore, Dubai, Hong Kong, London, and other parts of the world. And I have to agree with them. So if they wanna let this opportunity pass by, America, you're doing a fantastic job at that. 
And that is it for today. So look, that concludes uh, the news to go over. Just a couple of things to make mention on uh, tomorrow. I'm going to have uh, Simon Dixon from Bank of the Future. And we're going to talk about the nonsense that is going on and how he sees things. And then also on uh, Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to have Randy from Teen Crypto in. She's going to be my co-host. We're going to go over some things. I like Randy because she's got a very young investor's perspective. And that right there, folks, is the future. But that concludes the day for the show. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. But that's it for today. I appreciate you stopping by. I really do. Thanks so much. And I'll see you on the next one.